Um, and I hope you all um, have questions because we're at that time. So um, I know we're supposed to end at 3.15, but I want to allow some time for the audience to give questions and have some dialogue with everybody. Anybody have a question for the panel? Oh, okay. This is the day of atonement, so if any of you want to join. Um, my question has to do with the notion of diversity. Uh, actually, I, I really related to what Kyle Beckham said in terms of not letting your adversaries define your agenda for you. Um, because in, I believe it was 85, uh, the, the Baki decision on affirmative action, the Supreme Court uh, came up with a very kind of a convoluted ruling. Uh, they pretty much uh, negated the notion that uh, the United States owed people of color anything uh, in reparation for discrimination, past discrimination. But they said that maybe affirmative action might be good for the university because it would make it more diverse. And I think, you know, diversity is a dear sweet concept, right? But it it's also has no politics. It has no analysis of, of uh, of why exactly something like ethnic studies is necessary. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I think one of the things that I react to now when I hear it is, what does it mean? Why is it important? And when people start saying, oh, ethnic studies is anti-Semitic because there's no Jewish studies in it, believe me, that is not what I went on strike for. Uh, God help me, I was an English major, and one thing you learned, whatever the faults of the English curriculum back then, a lack of attention to Jewish writers is not one of them. Uh, you know, um, this idea, and I think um, one of you said it very well. I, actually, it was Teresa Montagna who said it. You know, you raise that thing, especially everybody thinks, well, why aren't I there too? I mean, I'm Italian, I'm, I'm Armenian, I'm, uh, I'm Polish. And that was never what it was about. That's not what we went on strike for. And I think we really have to, uh, you know, and because anti-Semitism is, for good reason, a hot-button issue, because uh, the Jews have been targeted by the white nationalist movement, there's no getting around it. But that's a separate issue, and it's not one that ethnic studies should be held hostage over. Thank you. Uh, I'm a former member of the San Francisco School Board, and California has a fantastic program, if it, which is follow it, um, we've got one of the first genocide curriculums in the country um, where we look at the Holocaust and, and a whole bunch of other genocides and especially now that curriculum is critical and especially now learning about anti-Semitism is critical but it belongs in that genocide curriculum that we already have taking it and recharging it. It doesn't belong in ethnic studies. Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple of things. I mean, I think there is something, there is actually a very big collaboration between white supremacists, and I don't even want to call them nationalists, okay? White supremacists and the Zionists. Richard Spencer is one of the organizers of Unite the Right Rally at Charlottesville. Got on Israeli TV and he said, well, I'm a white Zionist. Why are you upset about that? And he actually held the Israeli law when he did the nation state law and so on. So there is no contradiction between anti-Semitism being anti-Semitic and actually supporting Israel as a project. John, so we, can, we, can, we, yeah, we can talk more about that. But I think also the other thing about reparations, this happened also in the World Congress of Raci on Racism in, in Durban. Actually, all the European countries and the US did not want to talk about reparations because there was a very big issue around indigenous people, around people who were kidnapped and enslaved uh, in, in the Americas. And so they didn't want to talk about it. And then they invented the whole issue was about Palestine. And basically, they really destroyed the conference. So a lot of the times, these issues become as a smoke screen in order for us not to actually and pit us against each other. I think it's really important to teach about anti-Semitism and about all the communities. And it doesn't have to be in one place only. It has to be spread out across the, the syllabus. It's the same way. We don't do one week on gender, one week on sexuality, one week on labor. We have to do it all across so students learn about the, all the human experience. So, it hurts me because it's so patently disingenuous. Yeah. Is that if you look here in San Francisco, we, Al Allison and I were big parts of helping build the ethnic studies program that's offered in every single high school in San Francisco. Is there some massive wave of anti Semitic violence attacks in San Francisco? No. 
In fact, if you talk to Jewish students who take ethnic studies in San Francisco, you're going to find the exact opposite narrative. So it's the, the just evolved face, bad faith argument that if they look at ethnic studies in practice, all of it will fall away. That it's actually, it creates the very classrooms that the state supposedly says it wants. That everyone says it wants. Because ethnic studies does exist. And where it does exist, is anti-Semitism a problem? No. Anti-Semitism gets crushed in ethnic studies classrooms. That's my first point. So, second thing, diversity. I think we need to just let that thing go. It's been, it's, I don't know if it's a term worth fighting over anymore. It's been muddled by the right wing so much to where now we're arguing over should, uh, you know, should people allow to be racist in uh, a classroom, right? Like, should we have a, a what are the, you know, we have to let extreme ideas into our, our classrooms, right? Like, we should respect that kind of ideological diversity. Again, I think that's just a red herring to give space to kind of anti-humanist, People who are anti-humanist, who are racist, who are sexist, who want to just have carte blanche to do that, to just stomp on other people's humanity. And then uh, lastly about just the, the term ethnic studies, I think we who are supporters of it need to have some discussion, and this is a long-term discussion, it ha has happened, it's continuing to happen, over should we continue to call it ethnic studies, should we broaden it into Something else, do we, do we honor, how do we honor that, that past while at the same time armoring it against the people who want to be, again, bad faith, yeah, people who are in bad faith, it has the word ethnic in it, therefore why am I not in it too? Which is like, again, so many of the criticisms of the model curriculum are trying to play language games that are bad faith language games because if they actually read the curriculum, they would see that all of that is laid out very well. Thank you. Um, I think we have one more question, um, and I want—I think there's a student.